continue here, and I said I wanted to touch on, and we're going to be referring to uh, Egyptian yoga, the philosophy of enlightenment by Muata Ashby. We have the old version. I think there's a 10th anniversary edition of that particular work. So here we're, we're going to read from the old version, and we're going to first of all discuss the I, the eyes, right? The eyes, plural. The eye of Re, who was falsely called Ra, right? And the eye of Horus, right? Or Cheri, who was falsely called Horus. In order to bottom out, right, this particular symbology right here, what does this mean, right? What does this mean right here, right? What does this scene really mean? Right. So let's now, first of all, deal with the two eyes. Right. As they were in the time of Abraham or the ancient. Right. The ancient time from the first time. Right. Or what's called the Zatepi. And let's break down the meaning of these two eyes. Now, one of the eyes is called the eye of Re. I'm going to start to pronounce it according to the ancient Afro-Shemitic Ethiopic, but I'll make reference that we're talking about Ra and Horus, but then I want you also to get the, the word, sound, and power correct, uh, Re. Re, the one who they call the Egyptian Ra, is actually mentioned in the Bible. This is very, very interesting. It's actually mentioned in the Bible. Hagar, right, called Yahweh by the name of El Roi, El Roi, which is, which is, El Ra or Re, the one who sees the shepherd, he who sees, and we'll get into the etymology as well. Abraham also calls upon Yahweh as Yere. Yere. Yere means the one who sees. And Yere, right, the Hebrew Yere is the Egyptian Ra, or what's called the Egyptian Ra, although the proper enunciation will be Re or Roi, Roi or Re, as in Jehovah Jireh, or the Ra. The Ra in Jireh is the Ra from ancient Egypt. Now, let's go forward right here and give an overview to this, because if you don't understand, right, if you don't understand the first time, if you don't understand what occurred or what happened in the first time, how would you be able to understand what is happening in this time? So it's important for us to understand what happened in the first time, and then we'll be able to recognize, right, this stolen eye, the stolen eye, the eye that Satan stole from the chosen, right? The eye that Satan stole from the Old Testament Christ or the Old Testament Messiah. All right. So let's touch on this right here. These two eyes right here. So now the eye of Re, Jaira, Ra, right? Jehovah Jaira, right? The eye of Re, the Uraeus, represents the life force power of the spirit which animates matter. The Uraeus or the Yere, the Uraeus, Yahweh Yere, Jehovah Jaira, is the right eye of fire and wrath. So now we have to distinguish this. Which eye is which? Right? Which eye is which? This is the left eye, right? And this is the right eye. So we're speaking on the right eye, right? And just for the record, you'll never find in ancient Egypt an eye in a triangle or in a pyramid. You won't find an eye. That strictly is Anglo European. That's part of Satan or Lucifer and the Luciferians and the Satanists stealing the eye of Horus as their father, Sutan, the Hebrew Shaitan, did. So they are the children of Sheth, as Numbers 23, 23, well, Numbers 23, 23, and um, Numbers 24, Numbers 24, let's get that verse we touched on in the first part, Numbers uh 24 verse verse um where are we right verse 17 numbers 20 
24, verse 17, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Yaakov, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheth, right? Or Shait, Shait on. The Egyptian Sutan, the Hebrew Shaitan, right? Or the modern Lucifer and Luciferians. All right, so let's go forward right here. So we have the Uraeus or the Yerei, the Uraeus, right, being the right eye of fire and wrath. The right eye is and was called an ancient Kemet. And in the wisdom that Moses was learned in, according to Acts 7.22, the daughter of Re or Roi, Hagar called Yahweh, Right, El Roi. We find this in Moses' first book, Genesis. The what's called the the the, the goddess or the the feminine principle, Echitacheru or Hathor, who commands the destructive power of the supreme God, Elohim Yahweh. Right, the eye of the high God. Now remember in chapter 23, Balaam, or in chapter 23 and 24, he speaks of having the knowledge, right? Having the knowledge, let's bring this up right here, of the high God. He says, he have said, which heard the words of Elohim and knew the knowledge of El Elyon, which saw the vision of El Shaddai falling into a trance, but having his eyes, plural, right? The left and the right, right? The spiritual and the material, eyes open or the left and the right brain, if you will, right? They say, oh, white people are left brain and black people are right brain. How did this, um, this, 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 uh, this, um, I was trying to think of a word like a, like a dispolar, like, like how did this divide and conquer, right? Who's really behind it, Right. The, the whites will say it's the blacks. The blacks will say it's the whites. We know that it is shoot on. It is shet on. It is sat on. Right. And those who follow him. Right. Those who follow him. But speaking of the eye of Jehovah Jireh, right, which is the right eye known as a Uraeus, Yahweh Yireh, right, the eye of the high God of El Elyon, which is called Rey Cheru. Right is the great feminine principle of the universe, Echit Cheru, in her wrathful and terrible aspect. Originally, the eye was sent out on an errand, and upon her return, she found that she was replaced by a surrogate. This was the first cause of the wrath of the eye. Since then, the eye can never be permanently and completely appeased, right? The high God, El Elyon or Are, used the formula to turn the eye into a rearing cobra, which he strapped to his forehead to ward off his enemies. This Uraeus head ornament was also used in ancient times to protect the third eye region of the head. So we see how it's the right eye of the Supreme God Right. And then it was transformed into be a cobra. Almost remind me of Genesis chapter three, the um, the, the Nechash or the, the serpent being most subtle in that sense. Right. Now, the serpent is a symbol of wisdom. Right. The third eye region of the head. Right. Located in the forehead between the eyebrows it is also known in some in some uh, disciplines or spiritualities as the third eye, the Ajna Chakra in the Kundalini Yoga system, right? It can be activated by continued meditation on the, for on the area of the forehead. It is the symbol of the life force energy representing not only the visible warmth or the fire of the sun, but also the subtle energy, the life force which animates it. It implies that one has mastered or sublimated the lower chakra energy or the sexual energy. This reminds me of the, the eunuch. Uh, we speak about the eunuch where some eunuchs are born eunuchs. Some are made eunuchs of men. Then the Moshiach says that some make themselves eunuchs for the kingdom 
of, of heaven for the kingdom of God's sake. So that's sublimating that sexual energy, which gives life, gives everything life, mother of all living. Developing this energy center allows us to be in contact with the invisible or the unseen world of the spirit and thus to see spiritually. So the right eye would represent spiritual, right? Spiritual vision, right? Spiritual vision. Now the right eye is also known as the burning heat of the sun in the utterance 316 of what's known as the coffin text. The eye speaks and says, I am the all seeing eye of the chosen or the eye of Kherui, whose appearance strikes terror, lady of slaughter, mighty one of frightfulness. Now, before ones we think, oh, well, that doesn't sound too good. Remember the psalm that says, and thy right hand shall teach you terrible things. If you were to read it in the Hebrew and in the royal of Hark, that right hand has a feminine gender. There are, there's gender, right, in Yahweh's agenda. But in Babylon, that has been confused. Gender has been bender. Now, in other texts, the eye is further described. Great will be your power and might, your majesty over the bodies of your enemies. Sound like the Psalms. They will fall howling on their faces. All mankind will cringe beneath you and your might. They will respect you when they see you in that vigorous form. The eye continues to speak. I am, yes, I am a burning flame, but also the boon companion of Ray, your Ray. I have seized the gods. There is no opposition to me. There's no opposition to I. Now, this is just a, a couple of couple of facts that one needs to understand that when we look at these these eyes here to understand what does it mean to have the eyes open and what's the significance of each eye. Briefly, let's touch on the left eye because the left eye, I think, is what you see on the back of the one dollar bill. All right. This left eye, the stolen left eye of Kheru, which his evil unk, say uncle, right, stole from him, ripped out his eye in this battle, this ancient Egyptian battle. Of, 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 of good and evil, right? Which corresponds to the fracture side or brother versus brother that we see in Moses' first book, the book of Genesis, the Cain and Abel story. All right. So let's now touch on the left, right? The left eye, right? The left eye. The left eye of Kheru, the chosen, symbolizes the power of the God of light. Now, this might be a reason why they also illuminated that eye on the enchantment known as the one dollar bill. Right. It implies that one has attained all the qualities as personified by Kheru, which is the Egyptian Christ or Messiah, the chosen one, the elect that we have vanquished the enemies of Osiris. And the enemies of Osiris, Osar, the enemies of the Abba, the Father, are ignorance, egoism, selfishness, disharmony, mental agitation from ourselves. The right eye of Heru, also known as the eye of Re, the Uraeus, Je Jehovah Jireh, Yahweh Yere, represents the sun, the S-U-N, the sun, Re, spiritual energy called in some disciplines prana or chi, and the left eye of Kheru is the moon eye, representing Orset, Isis, nature, mental power, and understanding. At once, Horus is the synthesis of spirit and body, or sun and moon. So when we look at these two eyes, we have one eye is a significant and symbol and symbolizes spiritual vision, right? Spiritual vision, and the other symbolizes temporal vision or matter vision. It is the power to see the way beyond spirit and matter, and that is the absolute reality. Seeing beyond, right, just the spirit and matter on the lower 
level or seeing that that ultimate reality. So not just seeing the temporal things. In other words, when we look upon this symbol right here, we don't just see this as, oh, us eye in a triangle above an uncompleted pyramid. We recognize the spiritual wickedness behind this, the spiritual significance to it, as well as the power in Christ, in our black Lord and Savior to overcome as he has overcome. Now, the, the symbol of the two eyes, the symbol of the two eyes, let's bring this up right here. The symbol of the two eyes of Horus is most ancient. The two eyes of the elect, that balance. Having existed in pre-dynastic times, 10,000 to 5,500 BCE, it carried over into other philosophies, such as the philosophy of Hinduism as the eyes of Krishna, and also into Buddhism as the eyes of, of Buddha. Now, all this came out of Africa. All this came out of Africa as the first life came out or human life came out of Africa. So did spiritual knowledge, wisdom, culture, technology came out of Africa. Now, some folks don't don't accept that as true. You understand? Perhaps it is ignorance, egoism, selfishness, disharmony, or mental agitation, or just blindness. The eye implies, the eyes implies a form of vision, a state of consciousness beyond ordinary um, fallen human perception or fallen human seeing, the way that fallen humans, fallen beings see, right? Um, just physically, just just sort of the outer aspects. They don't see that they're, they're spiritually blind, right? Spiritually blind, and see the the eye on the on on the on the the, the great seal. It, it's a part of that. That's a part of what that was meant to do. It's it's all about the money, right? It's all about the money, right? The love of money is the root of all kind of evil. So where would they put this talisman? Where would they put this this, this enchantment? This sorcery? on the currency, right? Just as Zechariah chapter five, verse six, so aptly states, this is their resemblance. This is their eye in all the earth. It's an effa, it's a, it's a measurement. Now, effa measures to, or used to measure to one bushel and about two or three pints. It's almost like, what can you get for a dollar? Asking that question. One time you could get more for it. They changed the measurements, right? They changed laws and times. Now, in the intervening time when Set or Sutan, right, the Egyptian, the Egyptian uh, Satan, when Sutan, Shaitan, had stolen Horus' eye, right, he took away Horus's vision of unity, right? It was that left eye that he stole. He took away the, the balance. Right, the balance within the chosen, the elect's mind. This is like what's happened to the lost sheep as well. To the lost sheep or lost black people. The balance in their mind. They can only see material, 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 paper, stacking paper, making bricks, and don't recognize they're in spiritual Egypt. Right? So Horus, the elect, therefore saw the world as Seth did, as Shet did, as Shut'an did. He saw the world exactly the same way as Seth did, through the state of consciousness of a forceful brute with unbridled emotion, passion, egoism. This is what is called in the Bible, living in the image of the beast. That's another way of explaining this ancient wisdom, Heru, lost the light. He lost that intuitional vision of the sun and was dominated by the moon or earthly passion. Feminine rage, as Carl Jung says, uh, rage, aggression is actually a kind of a feminine sort of a thing, right? And that was the vision of Seth, right? Sate, which in ancient which in Amharic means female, actually, which is very interesting, Shet and Shet on the Egyptian Satan. And this clouded the mind, this clouded the mind and it impeded the higher thought and intuition. 
right? They make one person the star of the movie. The next person become a celebrity. The next person get a lot of bling bling, got a lot of money, throwing money all over the place. And the mind of the lost sheeple becomes blind. They know what they are doing. Therefore, the setian or the set on the body consciousness vision is hostile to Ray, to Jehovah Jireh, Yahweh Yireh, Yireh, the spiritual vision of Abraham, the father of the Amen, the father of the faith, and must be fought against until it is controlled, or some say sublimated, good over evil. As stated in the Egyptian book of the coming forth by day, in chapter 23, Shut'an, Setian thinking, is the greatest force that's holding the soul in a state of bondage. And there you get to see that enchantment. There you get to see that that um, witchcraft right there. And you use it every day. And it's in people's mind. It's what people keep in their frontal lobe. Just thinking about how to make more of this because they are in they are being held many against their will in a state of bondage now there are some who have sold their souls they know what they have you know that's that's a whole, that's different most of y'all don't even know what's going on right now at the end of the conflict between Horus and Seth Seth shoot shut brute force arrogance egoism is sublimated through Tahuti through Tahut, through wisdom, right? Through that meekness, right? Through the meekness of Christ. And we're going to explain the Tahut factor as well from the Ethiopic through the Book of the Seven Seals, the Kemetah or the Q, the Q Bible of His Majesty, the Book of the Seven Seals. Now, his physical force is directed to the service. Once he's sublimated, right? His physical force, he becomes a servant as he was intended to be, right? And he serves, he serves Yahweh. That's why it says in Revelation, it says um, the Jews who call themselves Jews will bow down and recognize God in you in uh, Revelation chapter uh, 3, verse 9. That explains this. His physical force is directed to the service of Re, right? Of Rastafara as he is given the prestigious position at the head of the bark of Ra as protector of Ra as he traverses the heavens every day. Each day Ra must do battle with the forces of darkness who would like to stop Ra from shining. They would like to stop Rastafari from shining. These forces are headed by Apophis, right? Are headed by Apophis. And Apophis is the serpent, right? That old dragon. And we could bring in the Georgis, the St. George versus the dragon, also fits into this template out of, out of Africa. Once Shet is controlled through wisdom, the wisdom of the King of Kings and his Christ, Jesus Christos, our Black Lord and Savior, once he's controlled through wisdom, he is seen doing battle against Apophis in order to protect the bark of Ra, or the boat of Ra, right? We can almost say that, like the ark. In this manner, our physical nature, brute animal force, must be placed at the service of the spirit, at the service of the spirit, right? That's why I said there's no condemnation to those who, 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 who walk in the spirit, who follow the spirit, who are in the spirit and not in the flesh. I mean, that's a very, very important. Um, we're we're going to sum up this first part with this scripture from Romans, right? From Romans, because we're in the end times of the Gentiles, right? And that's the feet of that statue, the feet of that statue, Roman times. And here's the stone coming down, right, to crash and dash in the foot. It says, I beseech you, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, 
brethren, because you have been born by that seed, by that word of our black Lord and Savior, to the glory of our Abba Father, by the mercies, the mercies of Elohim, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to Elohim, which is your reasonable service. So we see how from the ancient Egyptian mysteries, and I was reading Egyptian yoga by Muata Ashbi, right? That section right there. Um, how now the connective, I'm showing you the connective in the scripture, right? That's why Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7, verse 22, Stephen, before he was martyred, this is probably one of the reasons why they martyred him, because he was showing the keys. He says, Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts, right, of the Egyptians, and he was mighty in word and in deed. So he, he both knew the logic, he had the knowledge, and he had the know-how. And be not conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to this Babylonian world system. Don't be conformed to this world, flesh or the devil, but be ye transformed by the what? The renewing of your mind that ye may prove, not guess, not assume, not just heard it somewhere, but you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect. Some people say there's nothing perfect because they don't want to practice the way of the good. Practice the way of the good and you will prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Elohim, that perfect will of Abba Father. 